Amen. Good evening. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord, everyone. Amen. We welcome you in to our Wednesday evening Bible study. Uh, thank you for tuning in to Liberty Pentecostal Church of the Apostolic Faith. We're glad that you're joining us uh, at whatever time you decide to join us. We thank God, uh, amen, for this time and space set aside uh, for the study of his word. We've already opened up in prayer, so we're just going to jump right into the word of the Lord on this evening. Uh, the topic should be on the screen uh, for tonight's Bible study uh, for the last three Wednesdays in February. Uh, we uh, dealt with the apostolic doctrine, the excerpts, and what we believed on all of the topics that were covered. Amen. So we thank God if you tuned in to those and hope they were a blessing to you. Uh, and as we mentioned at the beginning, at the onset of those studies, it was mostly for evangelistic purposes. Amen. So that people would know what we as apostolics, what we believe in, what some of our doctrines are. And so uh, we're moving on tonight. So thank God for that study. Uh, however, the last um, study, we did talk about the resurrection. And so I am going to um, still use that topic on tonight uh, just to delve into a different area uh, dealing with the re resurrection. And so uh, that will be our Bible study on tonight, the resurrection of the dead. Amen. And I'm not going to go over many of the scriptures that I went over last week when we covered uh, the excerpts from the Apostles' Doctrine, uh, but I did want to show some particular um, scriptures concerning that and uh, a different point of view uh, by some Bible scholars on a portion of that study, which we didn't deal with on last week. So uh, let's get ready to go into the word uh, for tonight. And so our topic tonight is resurrection of the dead. Amen. Uh, okay. All right. Um, so when we talk about resurrection, we're going to talk about um, three different uh, subtopics concerning the resurrection. Uh, so the resurrection in its simplest forms uh, is being raised from the dead. So that's the most simplest uh, definition I think that we found is the resurrection is being raised from the dead. Uh, now there's some point of view, and I understand the point of view um, from one angle, uh, but there's a point of view that uh, says that uh, Bible scholars claim that all who are raised from the dead are not necessarily resurrected, uh, but some are resuscitated. Uh, they say resuscitations like that of Lazarus is a return to life, but eventually physical death comes again. And so uh, that's true to a point, but uh, what I'd like to probably add to that as we go through the examples of those who were raised from the dead, um, there's a different element than what we normally speak of as just a, a resuscitation. Because sometimes when we think of resuscitation, we think, you know, with the medical field when they have, you know, uh, their different procedures, CPR and things of that nature uh, to help a person come back if they've stopped breathing uh, for whatever reason. And so uh, resuscitation then is to revive from apparent death, which is, it is, you know, a raising of the dead. Uh, so resuscitate is to revive from apparent death or from unconsciousness. Okay. So the first element though, when we talk about Bible study and, and the resurrection of the dead, uh, one form of the resurrection of the dead to me, uh, is a form of miraculous healing. And so to me, that's more than uh, my understanding of a resuscitation because of the way that we use the term in today's um, world and medical field and such. Um, so to me, uh, when people were raised from the dead in the Bible, uh, it has the spiritual element of the power of God, amen, or miraculously healing that person from whatever uh, ailment that they had and bringing them back to life. So let's look at some Old Testament examples of the dead being miraculously raised back to life. So again, resurrection means being raised from the dead or being brought back to life, raised back to life. Um, so let's go to 1 Kings chapter 17. 
So again, we're talking about the resurrection of the dead on tonight, but we're going to talk about three different subtopics. And the first subtopic, uh, resurrection from the dead as a form of miraculous healing. And as I mentioned, some Bible scholars uh, just simply call it resuscitating. By the definition of the word, it is uh, being raised from the dead to revive from apparent death or from unconsciousness. Uh, but when I think of it personally, I think about the medical field and how they are able, because God has given them knowledge and understanding on how to help people be revived and given them techniques and things. Uh, but uh, in the biblical standpoint, uh, to me, the element was miracle, which is something beyond what a human being can do. It uh, involves uh, the power of God coming in and raising that person from the dead. All right, so Old Testament examples of uh, the dead miraculously raised back to life. First Kings 17 and 22. Okay, and it says, And the Lord heard the voice of Elijah, and the soul of the child came into him again, and he revived. And so we know the widow woman, uh, I believe it's Zarephath, uh, the widow woman here, she um, had a child, and the child died. And this is Elijah. This is not his predecessor, Elisha. And we know this, a similar miracle happened with Elisha as well. And so 1 Kings 17, 17, 22, it says, And the Lord heard the voice of Elijah. Elijah prayed. And the soul of the child came into him again, and he revived. So that dead child was raised back to life. And that was a miracle because it said the Lord heard the voice of his prophet. Okay, so that's, that goes beyond to me uh, our uh, use of today's terminology of, of resuscitation, which by definition it is to revive from apparent death. And so this little woman's son had died. And so he was raised back to life uh, from uh, death. And, but it was by the power of the Lord. Amen? It wasn't like they called the doctors and said, come in, you know, call the EMT and the paramedics and let's resuscitate this boy. But the man of God was called and he called on the name of the Lord. Okay, um, let's go to Second Kings chapter number 4. <clears throat> talking about the resurrection of the dead and that's a great thing so so there's a reason why we're talking about the resurrection of the dead because if any of us were to die uh we will want you know some people you know they put in their uh last wish that they don't want to be resuscitated if something should happen to them medically uh but most of us i think want to be revived <laughs> we want to come back to life we want to live Amen. And so uh, if something happens that would threaten our life, uh, we would want God to intervene and, and, and bring us back. Amen. If we're not ready to go. But the point, one thing about it, no matter what, we always want to be ready and in the Lord and ready to go if it's our time. But we all want to live. Uh, 2 Kings 4 and 35. <clears throat> now, this account is talking about Elisha who was Elijah's successor, okay? And it says, Then he returned and walked in the house to and fro and went up and stretched himself upon him and the child sneezed seven times and the child opened his eyes. So this was the Shunammite woman, a man who had miraculously had the son because Elijah had told her that, you know, the Lord was going to bless her to conceive. And so we know the story how the child died. And so she ran, you know, to the man of God and he came back to the house and uh, he said, you know, she's sorrowful, but the Lord didn't reveal to me what the problem is, what's the matter. And so she, when she got there, you know, she let him know, I told you I didn't want this and don't, 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 not that I don't want one, but don't promise me that because she really did want something, but she didn't want anyone lying to her. But anyway, the story here is that the child died, the Shunammite woman's child died, and so Elisha went. And it says, and he returned and walked into the house to and fro and went up and stretched himself upon him. And the child sneezed seven times and the child opened his eyes. So that child was miraculously raised back to life. Amen. A, a miraculous healing because the child had fallen sick and had died. Amen. Uh, let's go also. Uh, 2 Kings 13, 
2 Kings 13. Okay, so in these particular examples, uh, if we go on the basis of what's um, explained here is that these particular people who were dead, they were raised back from the dead, but, and they had received a return to life, but eventually, um, Physical death came to them again. So I think I'm at 2 Kings 13 and 21, and it says, And it came to pass, as they were burying a man, that behold, they spied a band of men, and they cast a man into the sepulchre of Elisha. This is the man of God that had the double portion, right? The prophet Elisha. And when the man was let down, so they had a dead man, they were burying a man. The man was let down and touched the bones of Elisha and he revived. He came back to life. He was raised from the dead and stood up on his feet. Amen. So again, that's the miraculous power of God. Amen. That's not because medical professionals was trying to bring him back to life. Here he was, he touched the bones of the anointed man of God and he revived and stood up on his feet. So he was raised from the dead miraculously. Amen. By contact with God's prophet. Amen. Talking about the resurrection of the dead. So I'm sure the widow woman uh, who Elijah brought her son back to life, she was happy. Amen. So resurrection from the dead it should be a happy thing, and in most accounts it will be until we, we get down to a certain portion of our lesson. We'll talk about the other part, but for the most part, uh, it should be looked at as a great thing. So when we're talking about uh, as a form of miraculous healing, it's a great thing. Amen? All right. Now let's look at some of the New Testament examples of the dead who were raised back to life. Can you imagine, you know, and all of that testifies to what? The power of God. Amen. We have an awesome God. He's all powerful, almighty. Amen. He do things past, you know, way, way past what we are able to do without him. Amen. So, and the, the Shunammite woman was, was greatly appreciative when Elisha, uh, was able to pray and 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 we see that the, her child was brought back to life, amen. And and Second Kings where we just read where the man was being buried and his bones touched the bones of Elisha. That just talks about the anointing that God had put on his prophet Elisha. So God still testifies about the people that He uses, His power that they are using, amen, to do great works. Uh, Matthew in the New Testament. Matthew chapter 9, let's go to verse 25. Okay, Matthew 9 and 25. And it's also written, the same story is written in Mark chapter 5, verse 42. <clears throat> Excuse me, so I'll read both accounts. It says, But when the people were put forth, he went in and took her by the hand, and the maid arose. And Mark 5 and 42 says, And straightway the damsel arose and walked, for she was of the age of twelve years, and they were astonished with a great astonishment. So I believe this was Jairus' daughter who had died. Amen. And, and, um, and the people were there, they were mourning, but we know the story how Jesus put, put them out because they, you know, laughed them to scorn. And so he went in, but he raised her back from the dead. Amen? And so it says, and they were astonished with great astonishment. So talking, again, just verifying that it was a miracle. Amen? It was a miracle. Okay, let's go to... Yeah, this, this is one of my favorite ones. I mean, all of them are great. You know, it's, it's wonderful to see the power of God and the workings of God. Matthew 27 and 
and we'll start at first verse 50 just to get the full context of um, what's going on here. This is the crucifixion of Jesus. So Matthew 27, verse 50, and we're going to read down to 53. And by the way, is, is this particular verse that kind of led me back to the Bible study of tonight, uh, dealing with the resurrection of the dead. Matthew 27, 50 through 53 says, Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. So they crucified the Lord. They say he yielded up the ghost. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from top to the bottom. And the earth did quake and the rocks rent and the graves were opened. So when Jesus Christ was crucified, uh, we know what happened. We, we know some, some, there were some signs, some miraculous signs around his crucifixion. We talk, they talked about how the darkness had covered over it, but it also talked about the veil of the temple that was rent in twain from top to bottom. And then there was an earthquake. And then it says, the graves were open and many bodies of the saints. Now, the, the sinners, the wicked didn't raise here. Amen. But the saints which slept arose. And so we see here, you know, the people that, you know, they're bringing back to, to life here. But here it says, the graves were open and many bodies of the saints which slept arose. And what else? And it says, and they came out of the graves after his resurrection. So we know Jesus Christ was the first one you know, that was resurrected. But after his resurrection, uh, these people who, when uh, when he died, amen, and the earthquake hit, the graves were open, and many of the saints, uh, many of the bodies of the saints which slept arose and came out of the graves after his resurrection. So after he was resurrected, these saints came out of their graves and went into the holy city, and they appeared unto many people. Isn't that something? That's amazing. Amen. Talking about the resurrection of the dead. All of this, again, it brings validation to the power of God. Amen. And, and showing who Jesus Christ really was, that he truly was the Messiah. Amen. And let's go to another account in the New Testament. So here we're talking about New Testament examples of the dead raised back to life. Amen. So again, these people who came out of their graves after his resurrection, it says, and they went into the holy city and appeared unto many. Amen. But just as we know um, with the miraculous raising of the dead here, that they actually do not stay alive. They do uh, suffer physical death again. Amen. They go back. They die again. Amen. Luke 7 verse 15. And it says, and he, and he that was dead sat up and began to speak. And he, meaning Jesus, delivered this young man to his mother. And so I believe this was uh, the young man in name. Uh, and so uh, he was the only son of this mother who was a widow. And Jesus had compassion on this widow mother who had lost her son. And so he touched um, his casket and he told him to arise. And so the young man sat up and began to speak. And Jesus delivered him to his mother again. So there again, another miraculous raising of the dead. Amen. And we'll go to the one that um, was referred to in, in the definition about uh, res res resuscitation. Amen. Talking about Lazarus. Um and we'll read, it's in St. John chapter number 11. And I just, just for the sake of talking about the resurrection, I think I'll, I'll read from verse 38. Because we, we know the story that um, Martha and Mary sent a uh, word to Jesus, sent a message to Jesus saying the one that you love is sick. And so, <coughs> excuse me, we know that Jesus did not come right away. And so Lazarus died. And so uh, here at this point, now Jesus Christ has gone uh, back to Bethany to visit Mary and Martha. It says in uh, verse 38, Jesus therefore, therefore again groaning in himself coming to the grave. It was a cave and a stone lay upon it. And Jesus said, 
Take ye away the stone. Martha, the sister of him that was dead, said unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh, for he hath been dead four days. So again, talking about the power of God, because if we just think about resuscitation in today's uh, terminology, after you've been dead for so many hours, uh, they look at it as you're not able to be uh, brought back to life or resuscitated for the simple fact of um, no oxygen in the body. And I don't know all the medical terminology, uh, but after you've been gone for so many days, is is uh, so many hours, it's unlikely that you'll be brought back. Uh, but this talks to the power of God here. This man, Lazarus, has been dead for four days now. And so he's dead, dead, you know. I mean, I'm sure Rick and Morty said in everything else. Uh, but Martha, the sister of him that was dead, said unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh, for he hath been dead four days. Jesus said unto her, said I not unto thee, that if thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God. So here we go again, talking about when people are raised from the dead, that's bringing God glory, amen, so that people will believe in him, live for him, and trust him, amen, because uh, we, when we see the power of God, that means we have hope, amen. And so he says, uh, said I not unto thee that if thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God. And so God wants everybody to know that he can get the glory. It's him that's doing these mighty, wonderful works. Amen. And we can have hope in him even today because the Bible tells us that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Amen. So our hope should be in him. And when he does these miraculous things for us, we ought to give him glory. Amen. It says, then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. And I knew, so he, he, he is praying to the Lord, amen. And so what do we know that Elijah did? Elijah prayed for the young boy. Elisha prayed, you know. So when we pray to God, God is able to make things happen miraculously through his power and for his glory. So Jesus, we know Jesus was both human and divine. So that human part of him prayed to the Father, amen. And he says, he says, uh, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. So prayer, when we talk to God about situations, God is able to work, amen, and we give him the glory, amen, for using his power to bring people back to life, amen. He says, he, Jesus said, and I knew that thou hearest me always. So Jesus said, I know you hear me always, but because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me, amen. And when he had thus spoken, he cried with a loud voice, amen. He's calling to the dead now, Lazarus, come forth, amen. And so you know it had to be a powerful cry, amen, because we can cry as loud as we want to, but the dead are still in the grave unless God has sanctioned it and anointed, amen. So it had to be an anointed voice, amen. So when God speaks, amen, everything got to move, amen. His word doesn't return it to him void. And so Jesus has spoken. He said he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. Forth. And so God's word has pinpoint accuracy because when he said Lazarus come forth, uh, all the other Lazarus that might have been dead might have come up. But when he knows, um, the dead knows who specifically God is talking to, amen. And so that Lazarus, the brother of Mary and Martha rose. All the other Lazarus didn't get up, but this particular one did, amen. He says, and when he had thus spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead, here we go, the raising of the dead. He that was dead, this man was dead four days. That was a miracle. Amen. He that was dead four days came forth. He was bound hand and foot with his grave clothes because they, they wrapped him in his grave clothes. And his face was bound with a napkin. And Jesus said unto them, loose him and let him go. Amen. Loose him because God had brought him back to life. Amen. To live you know, some more time. Amen. And we know that even after he was risen from the dead, after Jesus Christ raised him from the dead, the Pharisees and the rest of them wanted to kill him again. <laughs> they were going to put him back in the grave because God got the glory. Amen. Jesus Christ got the glory for raising the dead. Amen. Working a miracle. And they didn't want to believe in Jesus. But the works that Jesus did showed that he was the Messiah. He was 
uh, God incarnate. He was God manifest in the body of flesh. He was the son of God. Amen. And they didn't want to see it. Amen. But God did these works through Jesus Christ so that uh, they would know that we would know that Jesus Christ was the Messiah. No doubt. Amen. Nobody else works power like this. Amen. And he that was dead came forth bound head and foot with the grave clothes and his face was bound about with a napkin. And Jesus said unto them, Loose him and let him go. So we know he was raised back to life to live. Amen. Not to turn, return immediately to the grave. So he did live some more time after he was raised from the dead. Let's go to Acts chapter 9, verse 40. And here we are. We're still talking about the New Testament uh, people that were raised from the dead. So God is letting us know that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Uh, the thing is that we don't find very many people that believe like that today. Amen. But it doesn't mean that God's power has diminished. He's still able to raise the dead, but it's if we believe. Amen. And there are many testimonies, though. People do testify that they were dead and they were raised back. Amen. Amen. But I think in many cases, they give the glory to the medical professions, uh, but we give glory to God. So Acts chapter 9, verse 40 says, Then Peter put them all forth and kneeled down and prayed, and turning him to the body, said he turned to the body, which means that body was lifeless. Tabitha was really dead, or Dorcas, she went by two different names, Tabitha or Dorcas. She was really dead, and they had washed her and, and put her on some different clothes. But when they found out that Peter wasn't far away, they called and sent for him. And so he came, and he put uh, all the rest of the people out, and he kneeled down, and he prayed. So here, see, God said, pray to me. I know how to raise the dead. Just pray to me. Amen. So Peter prayed. It says, and turning him, after he prayed to the Lord, he turned him to the body, to Tabitha, her body, because the life was gone out of her. And he said, Tabitha, arise. So he said, she's telling her, raise from the dead. And what did she do? It says, she opened her eyes. And when she saw Peter, what did she do? She sat up. I mean, mean, life came back into that body. So Tabitha was raised from the dead. Amen. So we understand that Jesus Christ has given his apostles the power to do the same things that he did on earth and the same things that he allowed the prophets to do in the Old Testament. Amen. God knows how to resurrect the dead. Amen. So if we pray, amen, God can resurrect the dead. And so uh, let's go to Luke 7 and 22. So he's able to do all things. He said, can you believe? Only believe. Amen. And we know that it was the Sadducees that didn't believe in the resurrection of the dead. Uh, but uh, he's telling everybody, even those like the Sadducees, only believe because I can raise the dead. Um, Luke 7 and 22. So it says here, then Jesus answering said unto them, go your way. And tell John what things ye have seen and heard, how that the blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, and the dead are raised. To the poor the gospel is preached. Because John the Baptist was in prison, he sent his followers to go ask Jesus Christ, are you the one or, or do we look for another? Are you the Messiah or do we look for another? So Jesus didn't say, yeah, I'm here he just said, go tell John this. Tell him what you see. Tell him the things you have seen and heard. How that the blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, and the dead are raised. And to the poor the gospel is preached. So God wants us all to know that he gets the glory for raising the dead. Amen. And even if he brings someone back through mouth to mouth resuscitation or whatever, the CPR that we use, God still gets the glory. But there are some people that are working that without the power of God. Amen. But God, we know God allows it, but we want to talk about the miraculous. Amen. So the miraculous is what human beings cannot do. They can't bring that body back, that breath back into the body unless God does it. Amen. Okay, so the second point, so that was the first point we wanted to look at as far as the resurrection of the dead. So the first point was the miraculous healing, amen, bringing people back to life after they have 
uh, died from uh, some some type of ailment. Amen. Bringing them back to life again. The second uh, point in the resurrection of the dead is the resurrection of Christ. Amen. We want to look at the resurrection of Christ. And so the resurrection of Jesus Christ is a central tru truth of the gospel. Amen. Central truth of the gospel. Amen. Very important part of the gospel, the death, burial, and the resurrection. Amen. Of Jesus Christ. Amen. So the resurrection has great impact. So the historical event whereby Jesus Christ came back from physical death to newness of life with a glorified body. Amen. The bodily resurrection of Jesus is one of the central tenets of the Christian faith. His bodily resurrection validates the claim that he is both Lord and Christ. It substantiates that his life and death were not just the life and death of a good man, because some people in other religions say Jesus Christ just was a man, and uh, some say he was just a prophet. Uh, but there are other people in other religions, and none of them has raised back from the dead. Amen? Amen. So he brought life. Amen. So it's, it substantiates that his life and death were not just the life and death of a good man or prophet, but that he was indeed God incarnate. He was God in sinless human flesh. Amen. And that by his substitutionary death, we can be forgiven of sins. Amen. So we have to understand again that the resurrection of Jesus Christ is central, is a central truth of the gospel. Amen. If he raised it, if he didn't raise back, up, you know, then are we dead? We're still dead in our sins. Amen. Those that believe in him. And so I think Paul wrote it in first Corinthians chapter number 15. Amen. But we have to remember because he had the power and he rose up, then we can rise also. Amen. That's our hope. Amen. That our bodies can be redeemed because he rose. Amen. With all power. He said, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Amen. Amen. So we thank God for that resurrection power because it gives us hope that we can be raised from the dead. Uh, the third, um, and of course, uh, coming up to Easter, which is coming soon, uh, we talk about Resurrection Sunday and things like that. So as we go closer to Easter, we'll be talking more of the resurrection. Uh, select readings, of course, come out of the gospel, um, gospel Matthew chapter 28, Mark, Luke and John. Amen. And so we will go in that further. Amen. Many messages to be preached. Thanking God for the resurrection. Amen. Because he lives, we can live also. We can have eternal life because he lives. Amen. He conquered death, hell, and the grave for us. So that's the excitement. We can be excited. Amen. He took our place on the cross. We're no longer looking forward to condemnation and, and the wrath of God. We're looking for that blessed hope. Amen. Of being with the Lord throughout all eternity. So we thank God for him rising up. Amen. Taking our, first of all, he died, taking our place on the cross, but he rose up so we can be in the presence of the Lord forever. Amen. So um, on last week, which I probably won't go too deep into this part because last week we did uh, cover it, uh, the catching away of the saints. And so, of course, we read Thessalonians 4, 13 through 18. So that's a part of the resurrection. Amen. It says, but I would not have you to be ignorant brethren concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. So again, we that are looking forward to the resurrection, we that are in Christ, we have hope. Hope of what? Hope of eternal life. Hope of raising up to eternal life. Amen. He says, for if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord, because the Lord is returning, he sh shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. So we can be confident and we can rest assured that we have a hope beyond the grave. Amen. We're not going to stay in the grave. So now um, the, the next point that we're looking at is the general resurrection. Amen. The general resurrection. And, and what that is, is the future bodily rising 
from the dead of all persons. So everybody that's gone, you know, through the grave, we're talking about the resurrection. It said the future bodily rising from the dead of all persons, some to rise to eternal life and others to eternal torment and separation from God. So both the righteous and the wicked will be resurrected. We must understand that eternal consequences are tied to actions and decisions that are made in this life. Amen. So Daniel 12 and 2, let's go there. I think we read that last week. Uh, we're not going to stay there long. Daniel 12 and 2. And it reads, And many of them that slept in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Now, I think last week I did make it plain that the saints are looking for the catching away. Amen. The rapture is what we call it. And then even after the rapture, there's going to be a resurrection of, of the dead. Amen. But the saints are looking to go, the, those born again believers in Jesus Christ, we're looking for the rapture. Amen. Uh, let's go. Okay, so now we're going to talk about promises to believers concerning the resurrection. So here are some of the promises. So believers may be confident facing death because God will not leave the believers destitute. So while we talk about resurrection of the dead, that means it gives people hope. Amen. Uh, those that are looking for God, those that have been obedient to God. Amen. It gives them hope. So believers may be confident when we face death because God will not leave the believers destitute. He will redeem believers from the grave and take them unto himself. So death is not final. God will change our vile bodies from mortal to immortality. Amen. So death is not final for the believer. Amen. Uh, let's go to Psalms 49 and 15. Again, we can be confident. So, so we don't fear death. Amen. Even though we don't want to die, we don't fear death or we shouldn't fear death because of the Bible says perfect love cast out fear. Amen. So we shouldn't fear death. We, I mean, we all want to live, I think, but we shouldn't fear death. So we have confident faith in death because God will not leave us destitute. Amen. 49 and 15 says, but God will redeem my soul from the, pow from the power of the grave. Amen. For he shall receive me. Selah. So Jesus Christ, we know he conquered death, hell, and the grave. So the grave cannot hold believers down. Amen. But God will redeem my soul from the power of the grave, for he shall receive me. Selah. Uh, let's go to John 5 and 25. And it says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming, and now is, when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God. So they're going to hear whose voice? The voice of the Son of God. And they that hear shall live. So everybody's not going to hear Jesus' voice, but the ones that hear it, they're going to live, right? Okay. All right. Uh, and I won't have you turn here for the, the shortness of the time, but John 6 and 40 says, And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone that seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life. And what? He said, And I will raise him up at the last day. Amen. So Jesus Christ is going to raise them up. John 11 and 25 says, Jesus said unto her, which was uh, Martha and Mary that we just spoke of a short while ago, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Acts 24 and 15 says, And have hope toward God, which they themselves also allow, that there should be a resurrection of the dead, both of the just and the unjust. So just because people don't believe don't mean that they won't be resurrected. They're going to be resurrected because they're going to have to give account for the things that were done in their body in this life. Amen. Uh, 
And I won't read that one again because we just read that. First Thessalonians 4 and uh, 16 again says, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, and with the voice of the archangel, and the, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Amen. Now, there are some doubts concerning the resurrection. So there, there are people that don't believe now or they have doubts, right? Uh, because Luke tells us uh, in 20, I'm not going to have you go there. Luke 20 and 27 says, Then came to him, meaning Jesus, certain of the Sadducees, which deny that there is any resurrection. Okay, so they tried to trap him. You know, so they came to him because they didn't believe in the resurrection. Amen. So I say to everybody tonight that don't believe, don't be a Sadducee, only believe. You believe it because it's true, amen, and God has proven it. Amen. Let me get a drink of water here, please, just for a second. <clears throat> So don't be a Sadducee, only believe, amen, because it's true. Uh, Acts, uh, Matthew, uh, there are some reasons also why some people don't believe because lies were told. Uh, let's turn there, Matthew 28, and we're going to read verses 11 through 15. <clears throat> now Jesus Christ had ascended, and the soldiers knew... <coughs> And they saw the angels there, but it says, now when they were going, behold, some of the watch came into the city of the guards that, that were there. They came into the city and showed unto the chief priest all the things that were done. So they know Jesus Christ raised from the dead. But what they did is they ran, excuse me. <clears throat> Okay, so it says they, uh, some of the watch, when they came into the city, they showed unto the chief priests all the things that were done. And when they were assembled with the elders and had taken counsel, they gave large money unto the soldiers. So they gave these soldiers, saying, Say ye, his disciples came by night and stole him away while we slept. And, of this come, and if this come to the governor's ears, we will persuade him and secure you. So they took the money. So these soldiers took the money and they did as they were taught. So here we see here uh, the elders gave them money, gave the soldiers money to tell a lie, saying that the disciples came by night and stole Jesus away. In other words, they didn't want them to know that Jesus Christ really had risen from the dead. And say, so these soldiers took the money and did as they were taught. It says, and this saying is commonly reported among the Jews until this day. or well, the time of the writing, the re Jews uh, believed that many of them, that the disciples came and stole away the body of Jesus Christ. Amen. So they paid them to lie, even though the soldiers let them know that he really did rise. Amen. They saw the angels. Okay, let's go to Acts uh, 17 and 18. Again, uh, people who... Uh, really don't believe in the resurrection of the dead, but we say uh, believe, amen, only believe, because the resurrection of the dead is true. So Acts 17 and 18 says, there certain philosophers of the Epicureans and of the Stoics encountered him and said, what will this babbler say? Talking about Paul. And some, he seemeth to be a set of forth of strange gods because he preached unto them Jesus and the resurrection of the dead, and the resurrection, excuse me. Verse 32 says, and when they heard of the resurrection of the dead, some people mocked, and some people mock today, but I say don't mock because it's true. The dead are going to be raised up, amen? And so where will you be? You're going to be raised up, or will you be raised up to eternal life, or will you be raised up to eternal damnation? But if you can believe in Jesus Christ and follow in his word, you can be raised up to eternal life. Amen. So don't mock, only believe. But it says, when they heard of the resurrection of the dead, some mocked. And others said, we will hear thee again of this matter. Say, we want to hear more about this. Amen. Uh, let's go. Uh, well, we don't have to go there. I'll just read it. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 12. It says, 
Uh, this is Paul that's uh, writing here. He said, now if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? Now here they were, these were believers. These, this was the church at Corinth. And so Paul was questioning them, saying, if, if we pre preach Christ that he rose from the dead, how are you that are believers Say, how say some of you that there's no resurrection of the dead? So shame on us if we're, we're born again and we say there's no resurrection of the dead because even through our new birth, amen, in the spirit, amen, we have been brought from the power of darkness, amen, to his marvelous light. So we've had a spiritual resurrection. So all of those, uh, those of us who have the Holy Ghost, we should not be questioning whether or not there is a resurrection because he's provided a resurrection in our soul from dead works. Amen? Okay, let's go to 2 Timothy 2 and 18. Here we're still talking about some people that don't believe in the resurrection of the dead. So uh, we want to um, do as much as we can to convince you and persuade you through the scriptures that there is resurrection of the dead. So you might be listening tonight um, never listened to me before, uh, and you're wondering about the resurrection of the dead. But the reason why we're going through these scriptures tonight, uh, you have to believe the Bible and to know that there is a resurrection of the dead. Um, so again, some in Corinthians who were born again, uh, he says, "How say some of you? Uh, how say some among you that there's no resurrection of the dead? How can you say that? Amen." Uh, 2 Timothy 2 and 18, it says, Who concerning the truth have erred, saying that the resurrection is past already, and overthrow the faith of some. So there are some people that come in amongst us, you know, that are erring in their truth. They don't know the truth, and they say certain things, talking about the resurrection is past already. Well, how could it be past already if the saints are still there? Amen? So, so some people are in error. Amen? And, and they overthrow the faith of some. So we have to be careful who we listen to. Amen. Okay. So now we're not just saying this, but there were many, many infallible proofs of Jesus Christ's resurrection. Amen. So, and I'll just go through the list. Uh, Mark 16. Some of them will read. Let's go to Mark 16 and 9. So the appearances of Christ after his resurrection, there are many infallible proofs of his resurrection. So we say, don't be a Sadducee, only believe Jesus Christ did rise from the dead. Amen. And there's going to be a resurrection of the saints. There's going to be a resurrection of all men. Amen. Mark 16 and 9 says, now, when Jesus was risen early the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he cast seven devils. So he was crucified. He died. He was buried. And it says, now when Jesus was risen early the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had cast seven devils. So he appeared. Amen. So people saw him after his resurrection. Amen. So people are witnesses to his resurrection. People saw him alive. Matthew 28 and 9 says, And as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them, saying, All hell. And they came and held him by the feet and worshipped him after he was risen. And also Luke 24 and 15. And it says, and it came to pass that while they communed together and reasoned, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. Amen. And so those were um, probably the disciples on the road to Emmaus. Um, 1 Corinthians 15 and 5 tells us, this is Paul writing to the Corinthians, and he said, and that he was seen of Cephas, and then of the twelve. So all throughout the scriptures is telling who saw Jesus Christ after he rose from the dead, after he was resurrected. So Cephas, who was Peter, saw them and then the twelve. And so when I first saw that, I said, well, what did he mean the twelve? Amen. Because Judas said, but they had chosen Matthias. Amen. So they, <clears throat> they added two, you know, after Judas 
uh, committed suicide, they did add someone to take his place. Amen. So, uh, so Peter, uh, Jesus Christ was seen of Peter and then other 12 apostles. And later on, we see that he was seen of uh, the 10 apostles without Thomas. Amen. And then he was seen in John 20 and 26. He was seen by the 11. And we'll read that. Let's go to John 20 and 26. And it says in John 20 and 26, and after eight days again, his disciples were with them and Thomas was with them. Then came Jesus and the door being shut and he stood in the midst and said, peace be unto you. Amen. So he can go through a whole different dimension in his glorified body. Amen. So the doors were shut, but he appeared. Amen. And so at this point, he told Thomas, he said, reach hither your fingers in the nail print, you know, because Thomas has said, until I reach my finger in his nail print and put my hand in his side, I won't believe that he rose. Amen. But we know after Jesus appeared, he said, my Lord and my God. Amen. He knew that Jesus Christ had risen. First uh, Corinthians 15 and 6 says, after that, he was seen of above 500 brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain until this present, but some are falling asleep. So that was Paul writing, amen, saying that Jesus Christ was seen after his resurrection of above 500 brothers. So a lot of people saw Jesus Christ after he resurrected, amen. And so all of that is just to show us that Jesus Christ showed himself alive by many infallible proofs. 1 Corinthians 15 and 7 says, and he was seen of James, amen. And then Luke 24 and 50, it says about those that were there when he ascended, and he led them out as far as to Bethany, and he lifted up his hands and blessed them, amen. And we know that he ascended. And then at Paul's conversion, amen. So Paul here, he's the one that's writing most of this in Corinthians and these letters, uh, but he tells about himself seeing the Lord after he had been after he had res been resurrected. So Acts, let's go to Acts chapter nine, verse five. Acts nine and five, and it says, "And he said, Who art thou, Lord?" And the Lord said, "I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest." It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. So Paul was here, was letting them know that when he was apprehended on the road to Damascus, he saw Jesus. He saw the Lord. The Lord appeared to him. Amen. And he'll say it again in 1 Corinthians. He says it, uh, 1 Corinthians 5 and 8. So let's go there because uh, this backs up what he said in Acts chapter 9, verse 5. So some people don't believe that. Paul actually saw Jesus after his resurrection, but Jesus did appear to him. When he was knocked to the ground in that great light, <laughs> who do we suppose that great light was? Amen. 1 Corinthians 8, 15, verse 8, and it says, And last of all, he's Paul, this is Paul talking, And last of all, he was seen of me also, as of one born out of due time. So Paul himself saw Jesus Christ. Amen after his resurrection, because the Lord appeared to him. Amen. So all those many infallible proofs. So just to let people know, amen, that the resurrection of the dead is real. Amen. So we know that in the Old Testament, God miraculously, and in the New Testament, God miraculously healed people by raising them back from the dead. Uh, the resurrection of Jesus Christ, the central truth of the gospel. Amen. Uh, knowing that um, by his substitutionary death and his resurrection, we can have forgiveness of sins. Amen. He's coming back. He's going to catch away the saints. Amen. There's going to be a general resurrection of all people. So the future bodily rising from the dead of all persons. So that is 
in our future, amen, but we want people to believe in the resurrection of the dead. We want people to believe in Jesus Christ, amen, and we want people to know that there is going to be a resurrection of the dead, and so all of us are going to have to give an account of what we've done in this body, in this life, and so we want it to be good. We don't want it to be evil. We want to have everlasting life, not everlasting torment and separation from God. So that's our Bible study on tonight, Resurrection of the Dead. Uh, so we want people to believe. Don't be a Sadducee, but believe in the resurrection of the dead. Believe that Jesus Christ rose from the dead. So there are many religions, amen, out there, but only one religion where the God, the creator of the heaven and earth, actually was uh, given as gave him, sent his son as a sacrifice, amen, and, and was risen from the dead, amen. So that's our Bible study on tonight, the resurrection of the dead. So we're looking for the catching the way of the saints, amen. But everybody is going to rise one day, but we want to rise to everlasting life. And so if you're not saved, if you're not born again, please become born again of the water and of the spirit. Be baptized in water in the name of Jesus Christ. Be filled with the Holy Ghost, uh, which is initial evidence of speaking in other tongues as the Spirit of God gives the utterance. And then walk that holy and righteous life until Jesus Christ returns. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please give us a call if you want to schedule a baptism, schedule counseling. Uh, if you want to be a member of this church, uh, please give us a call and let us know. Uh, blessings to you is our prayer. Amen. <laughs>